was a memorable moment from last year's NATO summit. During President Trump's first trip abroad, he brushed past Montenegro's prime minister. The president will be center stage again this year as he ramps up pressure on NATO allies to spend more on their own defense. We go now to Brussels and the U.S. ambassador to NATO, former Texas Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson. Welcome to the program. Ambassador, how much of a threat is Russia to the military alliance? Well, thank you, Margaret, very much. Um, we are seeing Russia uh, with malign activities on so many fronts right now, uh, especially the hybrid area where uh, they are, through social media, sowing discontent and even false information to try to divide our allies and take them away from uh, the West and toward uh, some dissidents and then hopefully they think influenced by them. Uh, they're also doing things like the terrible attack, the nerve agent attack in Great Britain. They're supporting um, a Syrian dictator who is using chemical weapons on his own people to kill even children. And it's just uh, on and on and on. They are also in violation of the very important INF treaty with the United States. Uh, they are not supposed to be building ballistic missiles at, at an intermediate range, but they are, and we know they are. So there are so many areas where they, they are uh, working against the interests of freedom and democracies and uh, peace in the world, and it is a big... Um, it's a big part of our deterrence effort to keep them from uh, taking over sovereign nations as they did in the Ukraine uh, when they took Crimea in 2014. Well, on that point, uh, President Trump has seemed to leave the door open to recognizing Russia's annexation of Crimea in some public statements. Last week on this program, Ambassador John Bolton said, while that's not U.S. policy, he said the president is open to changing that. Can you reassure our allies that the president won't agree to recognize Crimea as part of Russia when he meets privately with Vladimir Putin. Well, I think that uh, our alliance is very solid and including uh, all of the efforts that the United States is making to shore up the sovereignty of the Ukraine. The Ukraine people, uh, they stood very tall in their uh, their really uh, peaceful revolution is what it was uh, at Maidan. Um, they have stood strong for their sovereignty and their right of self-governance, and we are standing behind them on that. And there is no, uh, there's no light between any of our allies on that very important issue. And the president, it sounds like you're saying, won't change his position on that. But the president seems to be muddying the waters on this question of whether Vladimir Putin is a friend or a foe. I mean, just this week, he called Vladimir Putin a fine man. Is that how you would describe Putin? Well, I wouldn't, but I will say that uh, despite how uh, the many malign activities that Vladimir Putin has been doing just in the last few years, um, NATO talks to Russia. We have what's called a NATO-Russia Council, where the ambassador from Russia meets with our NATO ambassadors. Uh, many of the foreign leaders uh, in our alliance meet with Putin, um, most certainly the Europeans do. Uh, but the effort, and, and our military does too, as well. We have uh, military to military talks with the Russian uh, chief of defense. But this is to deconflict. It is not to allow escalation of hostilities. And also, I think the president will encourage Vladimir Putin to start changing their behavior to be, uh, we'd like for Russia to be an ally, a trading partner. But right now we have sanctions against Russia because of their malign influence and the things they're doing that are very disruptive, uh, trying to divide our alliance. So yes, we should be talking to Vladimir Putin and many of our allied nations do as well, but it is to try to bring them in the tent instead of uh, just constantly seeing them do these things that are attempting to disrupt us but will not.
Well, Ambassador, we will be watching that meeting closely. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Margaret.